Hello, and welcome to Hudson Valley News and Views. I'm County Legislator Catherine Borgia, and I have some very interesting guests with me here today. We're, today we'll be talking to some of the students who went on Project Relief Project to um, New Orleans over this past February break. And we also have with us the youth coordinator of Briarcliff Congregational Church, the man who organized the trip, Peter Clemens, as well as several students from the Austin and Briarcliff area. Um, I'm going to start with you, Peter. Tell us a little bit about how the trip got organized. Well, certainly. The, um, this is the fifth year mm -hmm. that we've been taking a group of students down to New Orleans for the February break. Um, the whole thing began really with a request on the part of the students in the in Briarcliff Congregational Church's high school Sunday school class mm -hmm. to um, you know put their faith into action and get involved right. in um, community service. Mm -hmm. And after exploring a number of different possible opportunities to do that, um, we focused on going down to New Orleans and helping rebuild homes that were uh, destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. So there still is quite a bit of work to be done, I understand. Oh, it's really heartbreaking, yeah. the amount of work that still remains to be done down there. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit about what happens during the course of the trip. Um, first of all, you, uh, you fly down, how many students go with you, what's, what's typically people's expectations of the trip? All right. Well, it, it has varied somewhat each mm -hmm. year because each year we've volunteered with a different host organization. Oh, interesting. Um, but this year we had a total of 42 volunteers, wow. 27 students, high schools and middle school students, and uh, 15 adults. Mm -hmm. All of the students are from the Austin and Briarcliff schools? Um, they're all from this area, yeah. but not necessarily all from those two schools. Right. Um, we've had uh, students from Peekskill and um, a, n a number of areas, you know, right. a number of uh, both schools and churches of different mm -hmm. denominations and different faiths in right. the area. And in fact, uh, this year we actually had a couple of uh, kids join us from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. All right. So um, I, why don't I start with some of the students. Tell me why you were interested in doing this trip, especially some of you who have done it for, for a number of years. Andrew, why don't you go? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I first got interested in the trip really because I go to Barcliffe Congregational Church mm -hmm. I have since I was a little kid, you know, four or five. And um, so I saw the way that so many of the older students who had gone on the trip uh, in previous years, there had been two trips before I was old right. enough to go on the, my first one. And I saw the way that it affected them and the way that they gained so much and they felt they had helped so much mm -hmm. with the trip. And that would that was what really... Um, started my interest in mm -hmm, wanting to go. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the tell me what the week is like. Um, it's a lot of work and a lot of fun at the same time. <laughs> uh, we definitely leave very tired, but mm -hmm. it's a good tired, if yeah. you know what I mean. It's sure. um it's a very uh, so it varies day to day, year to year as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one year we could be putting up drywall the entire mm -hmm. time, another year we can be uh, uh, lugging pews back and forth from inside and outside of a church, <laughs> but um, it's it's great work and we really feel we get a lot out mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. Natalie, let me ask you, since this was your first trip, did it meet your expectations? It was beyond my expectations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was beyond my expectations. Tell me a little bit more. <laughs> um, well, in the previous years, they talked about doing a lot of construction trips mm -hmm. and going and doing drywall and scraping paint, mm -hmm. putting in floors. But I got to do two days at a food pantry. Oh, okay. So you did a little bit and more that was, direct service with people. Yeah, that yeah. was really cool yeah. to talk yeah. to the people, and they all wanted to share their stories with us. Mm -hmm. well, tell us some of them. Tell, tell us some of the things you learned from the people. Well, there was actually quite a few instances where um, the food pantry only distributes food by how many people are in a family. Mm -hmm. So if you only have three people in your family, you can only get uh, one loaf of bread as opposed right. to two mm -hmm. um, breads or baked goods. Mm -hmm. And there was a family of three who came to me and they were like begging for the bread. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard yeah. to not, so you just kind of be like, I didn't see that. Oh. But that's like, <laughs> the, hard, that's, like the hardest part of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Because you see them and... So they're still in such dire need that they really need food to sustain themselves, sort mm -hmm. of similar to what we see here in, in our area with the increased need for service of food pantries providing. I actually just learned um, a few weeks ago when I was at the opening of the, um, 
the Westchester Food Bank, how much more need we've seen in this area over the past three years. Um, so I can imagine an area that's been economically devastated, how it must be very challenging for people really to just meet their, just meet their needs. And did you expect, when you went down, did you expect that you would have the level of emotional engagement that you wound up having? No. I mean, the first house that I went to, which um, on the first and second day I went to the house on Rosalia Street, uh -huh. where we were putting up drywall, I saw the communities and, like, basically just, like, broken houses that mm. had been abandoned. You could see what was left of them, like, um, 30 old basketball hoops, and you just imagine kids that used to play in them. Yeah. And it's like that made me more upset than I thought it would mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. the houses. Sure, sure, sure. What about you, Porter? You, this was your first trip as well? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what your, your expectations were. I know your dad organizes it, so you probably had a lot of inside information. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'd been, I'd been hearing about the trip for about uh, four years now. Mm -hmm. And um, to finally be able to go on the trip was definitely, it was, it was a great experience because, um, well, I mean, when I, when I went there, again, I expected to do a lot of physical labor. Mm -hmm. um, but the amount of uh, community work that I ended up doing, uh, it was it was more than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. One of the days I um the day after Mardi Gras, mm -hmm. I uh, I went to um, a bead factory where oh. I spent the day sorting beads, oh. and um, so they could be uh, environment like th so they could be disposed of in a more environmentally sound mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that was that was it was really fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell tell us a little bit about how these jobs came about. Okay. The, um, we, we volunteered this year with a, um, a group called Camp Restore. Mm -hmm. That's a Lutheran um, service agency. Mm -hmm. And they um, host volunteers year-round. And they set up uh, service opportunities for the volunteers you know, to be engaged in. Mm -hmm. And they, this organization, unlike some of the other groups that we've volunteered with that strictly do construction, this group has the philosophy that, um, you know, the community was devastated not only in terms of housing right. but in terms of all the fabric of community mm -hmm. that that you know um, supports and makes the community viable and so they funnel volunteers to a broad array of other kinds of service organizations mm -hmm. in addition to doing construction projects mm -hmm. and um, so the one that Porter was just referring to is part of the ARC of Greater New Orleans okay. that works with um, mentally Indigenous. handicapped individuals yeah. and they provide um, work for over 120 mm -hmm. uh, adults mm -hmm. in the New Orleans area, um, all above minimum wage and with benefits. So it's Excellent. it's a pretty yeah. astonishing yeah. Um, operation and one of their programs is to recycle Mardi Gras beads. Oh. So after they're thrown you know, from the right. uh, floats they get collected and people bring them in. Mm -hmm. So rather than ending up in landfill, mm -hmm. they get cleaned and sorted mm -hmm. and s sold back to crews the following year. Uh -huh. um, so that was, uh, that that was, was the, part of the project <laughs> that I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we worked on a total of nine different, um, we worked on nine different projects this year. Um, three of them were construction, mm -hmm. two were homes, and the third construction project was uh, Trinity Lutheran Church that mm -hmm. uh, is the last Lutheran church in southern Louisiana to be um, restored okay. since Hurricane Katrina. Right. And it was in the sort of final stages prior to a grand reopening mm -hmm. that took place this past Easter. Oh, So excellent. it was uh, wonderful. They had, uh, that was online, mm -hmm. and we were able to, to see the, the church, you know, in use for the first time in, in six years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Amelia, you've been on a number of these trips. Uh, yeah, I was on four trips. Four trips. And tell me how your experience has been over the course of those years. Has it changed? Have you, ha has your understanding deepened? Um, well, definitely. I think that the type of work that we were doing each of the four years has definitely been different. Mm -hmm. There um, was a lot more, a lot more construction in the earlier mm -hmm. years, you know, like, like from the, the ground up sort of, right, so to speak. Right. You know, we had, um, a couple of a couple of years, or I think it was my first year, we were working directly in the Lower Ninth Ward, mm -hmm. which was really interesting. Um, but then, sort of as the years progressed, we started also doing community service and community outreach, mm -hmm. and 
um, even like watching New Orleans change from right. the first year to the fourth year has there's a drastic change. Right. You know, it's it's definitely um, definitely improved mm -hmm. in some areas. There's mm -hmm. you know still a lot of areas where um, homes have been neglected mm -hmm. and people have been neglected, but I think that you know it's it, it gives you a little bit of hope to see right. how far how far the area has come Great. in in the yeah. four years that yeah. they've been going. Yeah. Now tell me, what would you say? You know, just from your limited experience, obviously, is the greatest need in New Orleans right now? Um, <laughs> I think that probably the greatest need at this point is getting people to come back to mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. um, I know that when uh, after Hurricane Katrina a huge amount of the population was displaced right. and went to Texas and other states mm -hmm. um, because they their homes were completely mm -hmm. wiped out. Um, and since then, a portion of those people have come back, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of the people never, never returned. Right. And I think that that has really had a huge impact. It's had an impact on, you know, the, the tax base, like the mm -hmm. number of people paying taxes. Mm -hmm. um, it's had an impact on just the communities, right. you know. Right. the fabric of the community. Exactly. Yeah. People yeah. who've been there for generations just are gone. Yeah. And, yeah. and that is a, mm -hmm. is a huge problem mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. some neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And what, what do you guys think needs to happen for that to, for that to be viable? Anybody? I think they need jobs. A lot of the businesses yeah. are gone. Yeah. Like, we go by on the road, so many abandoned businesses. Yeah. And you have to think, like, the people that are poor and can't pay for their houses to be redone, like, where are they working, right. getting the money from? They're not. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think also services mm -hmm. from the government, mm -hmm. you know, um, schools, things like that need to be reopened or improved mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just in general yeah yeah it's hard for a, for a poor state to invest money like that too so that's yeah. definitely part of the reason why relief organizations probably target you know there's so many disasters there's always disasters and mm -hmm. I think that what often happens to communities is that there's a big outpouring of support right at the time of the mm -hmm. disaster but then people have a tendency to forget so um, it's great that you've been able to maintain this kind of this kind of relationship. Let me ask all of you, what do you think, when you return from the trip and you start to go back to school and sort of living your lives again, what, what's the thing that you take away? Is Are there things that you take away that you apply to your everyday life, would you say? Why don't you start, Natalie? Um, definitely um, with helping other people and like yeah. listening to their stories because, well, as I talked about before, the food pantry and talking to them, mm -hmm. we were so important to them as like almost like therapists. Like they need to share their story and get right. it out in order to get over it. Mm -hmm. And I find that that's a lot of people when they're going through anything that's difficult, mm -hmm. they need to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. So you've been able to um, transfer that sort of empathy into your own lives, into your classmates and definitely family members and friends. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. You feel that that was part of a. Uh, a, re a real growing experience for you. Yeah, but you. I think it's different for everyone because we all have so many different projects, yeah, you know, yeah, so we can take different yeah. things from it. Well, I'm going to ask everybody, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, do you have a...? Um, I would agree with Natalie. I think <laughs> the biggest thing I was able to take from it was relationships with people, how, um, you know, down there um, it's, you know, sort of a weird thing to think about, but people are so different in it's the way people react to you uh -huh. um, changes your perception of other people uh -huh. and really the sort of openness that the community has. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually, um, a group of us worked on uh, one project on a day and we got to go to the Lower Ninth Ward after mm -hmm. finishing up. We met this man who was out, you know, barbecuing. It was on Mardi Gras, so, you know, barbecuing. And we got to have a long conversation with him about how um, he – Everyone there down there appreciates um, anyone who has come down to help out. Mm -hmm. We had not worked directly on this man's house, and he still, you know, cared. And yeah. I think that's sort of the thing I take from it is mm -hmm. caring and trying to be open to other people mm -hmm. in a way that um, makes them know that you appreciate them. So you think you're able to do that into in your regular life here? I feel Back like <laughs> I, well, I feel like it's hard sometimes to remember it always, but I think definitely it's something that I can carry with me and yeah. keep in the back of my head. Yeah. So you said that people in New Orleans are different. How do you feel that they're different? I just think um, oftentimes uh, we get sort of consumed by our own day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. And down there, um, it just seems like they, because of what happened to them, mm -hmm. they seem to be more open and willing to accept help, willing to accept various mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And um, they seem more akin to it and appreciative of it mm -hmm. and they seem used to it and I think you know 
being able to ask for help, being able to receive help is something we should be able yeah. to do. Yeah. Well, one of the things I've always found um, as a volunteer myself in many organizations is that um, the, the person who is giving the help also receives so much from right. having the opportunity to give back. I would agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's really kind of like the secret of volunteering, right? That people, and people often really praise you for volunteering, but the reality is that you get so much out of it exactly. yourself, you're already yeah. rewarded. <laughs> so what about you, Amelia? What do you think um, you bring back from it? I think that I definitely have sort of come to realize how privileged we are in mm. this community and you know there's obviously there's still problems here in New York and in Westchester but compared to what it's like in New Orleans mm. I think that there's a lot of things that I take for granted my classmates take for granted mm. you know just in terms of like Austin in high school we have an amazing school mm -hmm. and I don't know that it's I mean I'm sure they have great schools in New Orleans right, too but right, it's right. it's definitely different you yeah. know there's like we have the resources to focus on education and other like you know things that really benefit everybody and mm -hmm. in New Orleans it's it's a little different yeah. in some in some ways they're still really trying to make meet their basic needs absolutely yeah 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 did I ask you did you did you talk about this <laughs> well you have plenty of time to think about it <laughs> um I, I I would agree with Amelia um I think it's very important not to take anything for granted because mm -hmm. seeing seeing the amount of like seeing seeing how much some people don't have mm -hmm. compared to how much I do right. is it's pretty astounding. So I would definitely say that it's um it's very important to be grateful uh, ah, to be grateful for what you've been giving given. That's good. That's that's excellent. That's excellent. So when you when you think about um, how this might impact your future, do you think that having these experiences would lead you to any kind of uh, professional decisions in your life? I, I know that. Well, Amelia, you're going to college, but um, a, a course of study or things that you might consider doing as an adult. Um, well, I'm, I'm just trying to project forward. Um, <laughs> it's hard to think forward five or ten years, but I think I'm going to definitely try to mm -hmm. um, use it to make, help make decisions in my future. Right. Use these experiences, what I've learned, mm -hmm. what I think I've taken away, and I think there's so much that I've mm -hmm. taken away, it's hard to kind of vocalize mm -hmm. all the feelings you get. Um, but I definitely hope that I'll be able to use what I've learned in decisions mm -hmm. in the future. And sure, well there's always opportunities right. I think, uh, you know, whatever your profession is to give of your give of your professional skills, but I, w I was actually just wondering if anybody was interested in doing something as a result of having, you know, having had these experiences, for example, like going into social work or or uh, you know, maybe working with um, working in education or something because of the needs that you so that you've seen. Well, yeah. for me I think I definitely like this whole experience of, of volunteering and since it's been so consistent right. and you know I've been going for four years mm -hmm. like the entire time I've been in high school mm -hmm. it's definitely shaped my opinion about what I want to be doing mm -hmm. when I get older yeah um, I don't know exactly what that's right, gonna sure. be yet but I know that I if I'm not actually like as my job mm -hmm. doing something to help people directly mm -hmm. I want that to be something that I'm doing when I'm not working right. or you know for my kids one day or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've I've considered, you know, doing the Peace Corps or something like mm -hmm. that um, during teach or after. For America. I know a lot of people who go on these yeah, trips absolutely. wind up <laughs> doing Teach for America. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I think it's definitely given me perspective, mm -hmm. um, and I absolutely mm -hmm. want to be continuing this in my future. Great, great. How about you guys over here? Anything strike out at you that maybe <laughs> gave you gave you a thought about something that you wouldn't have thought about otherwise? Even just like in course of study or or. Uh, um, yeah. Well, as I've gotten older, there are very mm -hmm. few things that I can say have been really constant in yeah. terms of things that I like to do. And community service has always been there. Like, yeah. it's never it's never boring because right. there's always new needs in mm -hmm. the world. And I will definitely be doing community service throughout my lifetime. And mm -hmm. New Orleans is a city that, like, really, I just the heart and soul of it is so beautiful and yeah. I think I'll be returning yeah. for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you, Porter? Um, well, I think one of the most notable aspects of community service as a whole um, and uh, volunteering is that it, it really just makes you want to do more. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I definitely do want to do more, mm -hmm. um, whether that be in America right. or who knows where. Right, right. Well, there's certainly plenty of needs in the world. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a um, 
school, I guess I was my first or second year of high school, my family took a trip down to New Orleans and we took this tour, you know, seeing all the sites. And I remember our tour guide saying to me, and this was years and years ago, I remember our tour guide saying to us, well, New Orleans is a bowl, and if we ever have a big flood, <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and he was quite right. <laughs> So, Peter, tell me a little bit about what made you decide that you wanted to be involved in this. That's a that's a big responsibility taking forty two volunteers down. <laughs> well, um, I think that my childhood experiences with with my family yeah. were a big uh, factor in um, making this something that I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my parents were missionaries mm -hmm. when I was growing up, so I. <clears throat> lived in Hong Kong for 13 years mm -hmm. of my childhood and uh, in India. Mm -hmm. It was where I finished high school. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that I felt like those experiences really shaped me as a, as a person and as a professional and that um, it would really be um, a wonderful thing if my my children, but also the children of the community that I'm a part of, mm -hmm. had opportunities that could, you know, um, open their eyes right. in a similar or way. Their perspective, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's wonderful. Thank you very much for doing this. So let me ask everyone, as sort of our, as we as we wind down a little bit, what was the most shocking or surprising or interesting thing that happened to you on an, on any of your <laughs> trips or on this trip? For those of you who went who went first. <laughs> they need to give me a moment to think. Okay. <laughs> well, let me ask you then before, while you're thinking about it, did you participate in any Mardi Gras-like activities? We did, <laughs> yes. Um, I think the most shocking thing for me was just sort of like realizing how different the culture was yeah. in, in New Orleans. I'd never, I mean, I'd been to the South when I was like a baby, yeah. but I'd never really been to that part of the country mm -hmm. before. And just to like... I don't know, when you're in, like, the French Quarter or mm -hmm. something like that, and you, you think about, you know, I, wait, I'm still in America? You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, <laughs> yeah. to believe. It's so different from New York City, yeah. from, you know, Boston, Chicago, L.A., any of those cities. Yeah. It's really, it has its own culture. Yeah, and that was does. that it was definitely I don't know shocking, excellent, but excellent coffee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I love about New Orleans: music all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> for me, uh, I don't know. Definitely, the culture was extremely interesting, and the Mardi Gras mm -hmm. parades we went to were very interesting. But for me, the most shocking part of it, and it was more jarring than anything, was the amount of work that still needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And even you know, I've been going for three years now, and. Um, to see the progress that was made from the first year to the third year, mm -hmm. it was incredible and it's great. But at the same time, you still see so many abandoned houses, so many um, still even destroyed houses. Mm -hmm. And it's jarring and alarming that um, six years later, it's still like that. Yeah. And it's incredible. 2005. Five. Yes, yeah. it was yeah. the first year. And it was when yeah. it happened. And yeah. so it's just... No. Crazy. Really. Oh, it is. It is. What about you? What was the, uh, I'll, I'll switch up the question for this side of the table. What was the most um, fun thing that happened to you on this on this year first trip? I gotta go with Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd never been to Mardi Gras before, mm -hmm. but it won't be my only Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful. <laughs> I mean, we went to um, we went to the Orpheus Parade, which yeah, is a really yeah. family friendly one. It was really good, and the but the floats are so cool. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't yeah. do anything like I mean we have nothing, like, we have nothing yeah. like that here. Yeah. Like I well, mean the Halloween parade in the village. Yeah. Well, yeah. But um, like there's just it's so lively. And there's so much going on. Yeah. You experience the music and. I'm not much of like a jazz person, but you go down there and you understand it. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. It's sort of the birthplace. What about you, Porter? What would you say was your um, most fun experience? Well, coming from February in New York, going <laughs> going down to New Orleans, it's it's definitely it's it's nice. Yeah. So I think I think the best part of New Orleans for me was um, we spent I think uh, lunch or maybe dinner. I'm not sure at a. It was like a crawfish boil. Oh, great. Oh, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. And yeah. It, it totally captured, for me, it, it captured all the southern hospitality and culture yeah. of, of yeah. that part of the country. Yeah. And it was just like a feast. And they just <laughs> laid down three tables with all sorts of, like, food. And 
captured my stomach more than yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the food is good in New Orleans, right? Oh. How, what, are you, do you stay with host families? What, what's your uh, lodging? No, it's uh, the organization that we stayed with is, mm-hmm. a, is a Lutheran facility that was a church mm-hmm. before the storm, and the buildings have been converted into dormitories and a, you know, a commercial kitchen, mm-hmm. and so they provide bunk bed housing. You just mm-hmm. bring um, you know, blankets and pillows, <laughs> and um, um, they have all the facilities. They can, they can accommodate up to 250 volunteers at a time, oh, great. Um, great. And, and they also organize the work projects. Mm-hmm. So really... Um, once we get ourselves down there, they um, provide the opportunity to right. both do the work and, you know, the organization of the sleeping mm-hmm. accommodations mm-hmm. and so forth. But it sounds like you did get to experience some of New Orleans culture as well. Yeah, yeah. As, as it happened. I mean, we we have gone at the week of the February school break right. each year, and um, this was the second time that it has happened, happened that Mardi, Mardi Gras, Gras fell yeah. within that week. Mardi yeah. Gras changes uh, where Depending it falls in the calendar um, you know, each year, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know the city shuts down. There was no <laughs> very little work that could be done on the Tuesday of Mardi Gras, so we um, you know we took advantage of that opportunity to really. Um, Celebrate with with the citizens of yeah, New Orleans. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So um, from this, are you, who's planning to go back? Everybody's planning there, to go back. <laughs> I hope there's a trip. It's like the Austin awesome School Board and the. Yeah, breaks. as you may know, Catherine, yeah. the uh, school schedule for this year has been changed up mm-hmm. in the Austin Public School, and they are not um, giving the full February week off this right. year. Um, however. Um, I have spoken with uh, Principal Mandel, and he said that if we do organize a trip for this year, he'd excuse uh-huh. Austin High School students to um, to participate in well, it. Well, that's so. going to be a big incentive. <laughs> <laughs> you might have 142 <laughs> students yeah. next year. <laughs> 900 kids on the trip. <laughs> New Orleans in, uh, in February is going to be quite the inducement. <laughs> <laughs> I found a passion out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> gripped me. <in. laughs> All right. Well, um, I'm really happy to have had this chance to learn a little bit more about the organization. Is there anything that you would like to leave the audience with with respect to this trip or uh, or any of the other volunteer work that you are interested in? Well, you know, the main thing that I'd like to say is that um, there is still so much to be done in New Orleans. Right. And um, that's one of the things that the families that we provide assistance to down there ask us to do right. is when we go back to tell the story and to right. let people know that uh, how much they appreciate the help that they've been given, but also how many more how people there are that really, them. really do need help. And um, as you are probably aware, there's not a lot of government assistance that's still mm-hmm. being provided. Um, most of it is through um, voluntary work on the part of yeah. you know, nonprofit organizations and, and churches and synagogues and mm-hmm. so forth. And um, so just to really encourage People, people to remember, to remember. yeah, and, to remember. Um, participate in that. Right, right, right. We want in our, you know, obviously to take care of each other in our nation. So, anybody else have any last words? Um, Amelia, no. <laughs> well, I mean, like they lost everything and they still have hope, and that's uh, a big reminder for us because yep. we're so privileged here. And right. sometimes you forget. Right. And they're so appreciative of our help, where you think that they might shun a group of people who are so privileged and just coming down because there have been a lot of tourists that are just coming to see and not mm-hmm. help. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for being the people who travel down to actually do to do the help. So thanks very much for, for appearing on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.